We've been using modeling and simulation more and more to understand problems. As we've been doing that, we've discovered that having one very large simulation run is inadequate to really address issues of a changing environment. And we started to generate what we call an ensemble. An ensemble is a set of related runs that describes the same problem space, but varies the environment that it's running in just a little bit. Now the problem is, is that traditional scientific visualization tools are not really designed to deal with ensemble. And we have generated SlyCat in response to that need. SlyCat has been used to analyze data in a number of different domains. We've been used predominantly at the labs for circuit analysis, physics problems, model verification and validation. But if you think about ensembles as being uh, essentially a, a set of uh, samples, you look at our world, and our world is full of ensembles. We have census data, we have health records, we have weather, we have climate, we have a whole variety of things, all of which are sampled across time and space. And in that broad context, SlyCat uh, affects all of these different domains and could be extended into them. SlyCat is a system that is designed specifically around the idea of ensemble analysis. It allows users to sit at their desktop and explore terabytes of data without having to have that kind of capability locally. SlyCat creates meta models of the models that are created through the simulations. And I want to distinguish our models from the physics models. Scientists are viewing the modeling that they do in the simulation as modeling a particular physical phenomenon. We are looking at each one of those models and then trying to understand them at a higher level. So we're making this meta model that models the set of models. A SlyCat model encapsulates a set of different things. First of all, it takes the analysis results that we've generated uh, remotely. Then it brings artifacts from that together to be able to visualize and explore aspects of the, the, the lower level models. And it combines that with this interactive capability that lets you pose different questions and different hypotheses and to, to, to look at different levels of abstraction. So you can ask questions about the model as a whole, you can ask questions about how individual members of the ensemble relate to each other, or you can find interesting examples and drill down and see exactly what's happening in individual instances. I think that as ensembles get larger, it becomes impossible for users to actually view them all. So we provide a mechanism whereby people can understand the results that they're getting in their full ensemble without going through and seeing them one at a time. This is analogous to what text analysis provides for you, where instead of reading each of a set of perhaps thousands of documents, you can get a summary of what the topics are or what the trends are or different aspects of it. SlyCat models each focus on different types of results. We have models that are used to analyze time series, table data, media such as videos, images, PDFs. We have models that do correlation analysis between variables. All of these different models form different perspectives that inform the use of each other. So you might see some anomaly in one model and it will lead you to look at that set of runs in a different model to understand it better. And users have come along and extended the application of SlyCat to other areas uh, through the addition of their own models, but also through using the models that we've provided in ways that we didn't imagine. SlyCat is exciting because it enables analysts to find different solutions in a much more rapid fashion. Well, SlyCat is already being used nationally. Not only do we have SlyCat servers operating at Sandia, but there are also servers set up at the Army Research Laboratory and the Idaho National Laboratory.